The gravity right around black holes is incredibly intense, but there's an important detail that many people don't quite get. Let's consider a black hole with one solar mass. When you're close to its event horizon, which is about three kilometers in radius, things become really strange. However, if you're far away from the black hole, it still behaves as just a one solar mass object. For instance, if the Earth were orbiting one astronomical unit away from a one solar mass black hole, the only significant difference compared to our current situation would be the absence of sunlight and the copious presence of X-rays generated by infalling matter passing the event horizon. Nevertheless, we would still orbit that black hole in the same manner we now do orbit the Sun. Kepler's laws would still apply, Newton's version of gravity would be valid at this distance, and the Earth would not be sucked in by some cosmic vacuum cleaner principle or the Hollywood movie principle. However, it's different when you're close to the event horizon. When your orbit is less than about three times the Schwarzschild radius, stable orbits no longer exist. The gravitational potential in the strong field of a hypercompact object is not at all the same as the familiar Newtonian 1 over r potential. However, once you're within three times that Schwarzschild radius, nothing can maintain a stable orbit. Tiny changes in orbital parameters will radically change the orbital trajectory close in, either plunging you in, flinging you out, or sending you on a wild, non-elliptical winding orbit that would make a carnival tilt-a-whirl look tame. Three Schwarzschild radii marks the radius of the innermost stable orbit. Outside this radius, circular orbits are stable, whereas within it, circular orbits are unstable. Therefore, if a black hole is accreting material from, say, a companion star, then the inner edge of the accretion disk probably lies at the innermost stable orbit. At that radius, gas peels off from the accretion disk orbiting the black hole and falls headlong straight into the black hole. Inside that three Schwarzschild radius boundary for matter orbits, we find that light's innermost stable orbit in a circle is at about a distance of one and a half times the Schwarzschild radius. This distance above the event horizon is a special location, the photon sphere, where light rays can orbit in circular orbits around the black hole. This is the closest to the black hole where anything can remain in a circular orbit without needing constant orbital thrust. But photons don't have rockets, so photons can, in principle, get stuck in circular orbits at the photon sphere. In practice, though, the orbit is unstable, so photons do not concentrate there, and there would be nothing special to witness there if you were to fall through the photon sphere. So why do all these phenomena occur? In my lectures on general relativity, I went into great detail about the concept of the equivalence principle. The equivalence principle represents Einstein's profound insight into the nature of space and time. Essentially, it states that all physical laws remain the same regardless of how the laboratories in which they are measured are moving with respect to each other. For example, suppose you're standing in a windowless room on the surface of the Earth. Here, you will experience the same physical laws as someone in a windowless rocket that is accelerating upwards with the same rate as the gravitational pull on the Earth. In the other words, there's no way to distinguish between being in a room on the Earth's surface and being in a rocket accelerating upwards at 1g. Similarly, if you compare the experience of floating freely in space in a box and a similar box falling toward the Earth, you wouldn't notice any difference between the two scenarios. Einstein summed this latter situation up with the phrase, all freely falling reference frames are identical. Of course, there are significant distinctions between these situations when viewed from the perspective of an outside observer. Of the bottom two depictions of the freely falling frames, one will run out of food or air, and the other will soon discover what concrete feels like. The one on the right, of course, will experience tidal effects, while the one on the left will not. But that's because the Earth's gravitational field is not strictly uniform. This radial infall will become important for extremely strong gravitational fields. But even then, the equivalence principle is valid, so long as you make the laboratory frames small enough and measure over short enough intervals to be able to ignore the tidal effects. Most importantly, it is this principle that underpins the geometric interpretation of space-time. Within your laboratory, no matter where you put it, you will measure the same physical laws. Freely falling frames are all the same. Stationary frames in gravitational fields are the same as constantly accelerated frames. Of course, 
there would be rocket vibrations or birds chirping or what have you. But if you remove these and other particularities, which would differ from place to place, the underpinning principle will always apply. It is this principle that leads to some very intriguing implications for black holes. Let's further clarify the concept. The equivalence principle states that all physical laws, whether they pertain to quantum mechanics, electrodynamics, mechanics, or thermodynamics, are the same for all inertial observers, regardless of their state of motion. So whether you're in free fall, floating, standing still, or moving at a constant speed, and if you're experiencing a uniform gravitational field or a constant acceleration, there's no way to distinguish between these various scenarios using known physical laws. This is incredibly important because the classical general relativity, which describes gravity, indicates that gravity is a physical law quite unlike these other laws in that it reflects an interaction that underpins all these other laws. To put it differently, Newtonian gravity, represented by, say, F equals gmm over r squared, is then completely reinterpreted. Instead of seeing gravity as a force requiring the interchange of particles or collisions that impart momentum or some sort of gravitational charge, we can understand gravity as the modification and alteration of space-time. In this view, we say that space-time is curved and that objects fall along the paths defined by that curvature. There is no force acting on them. They're simply following the lay of the land. So far, general relativity has withstood exceptionally rigorous testing, including remarkable experiments related to gravitational waves. These tests provide strong support for general relativity as the most accurate description of gravity. Presently, the predictions derived from general relativity are testable and have been consistently validated by numerous experimental results.